Okay, so I'm Chuck Holton, and this is the Hot Zone Podcast, special edition today. We're going to talk about what I carry when I travel. This is the Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. really worked hard to try to pare down my equipment to the absolute minimum. I mean, I've always been kind of a ultralight enthusiast, backpacker type anyway. And so when it comes to international travel, number one, I don't like to check bags if I don't absolutely have to, because that's a good way to get some of your equipment lost. And it also holds you up. It just makes everything go so much slower getting through the airport. And I, I, I want to make it as efficient as possible when you fly over 100,000 miles a year, uh, you, you do want things to be efficient and to go smoothly. So this, let, me, let me just go through what my bag looks like when I travel. And this is pretty much what I carry, whether I'm traveling for a month or whether I'm traveling for overnight. Because it's pretty much all that I need. I've got it pared down to the bare minimum. And I'm always looking for ways to make it lighter and smaller. So first, we're going to start with my clothing. This is everything I carry. It's basically three. I I usually take three pairs of pants and four shirts with me along with like five pairs of socks and four or five pairs of underwear. And that's it. And that, that all fits in here. I've got a special travel wardrobe that I keep packed all the time because sometimes I have to throw everything in a bag and be out of here in a matter of an hour or so. If there's a earthquake or something uh, unanticipated that I've got to go cover right away. So I keep that bag packed. When I get home, I put that in the laundry. It gets washed. It gets folded. And it goes right back in the bag. And it's ready to go at all times. Now, I am uh, partial to things that wash easily and dry easily because obviously if you're going for more than three or four days, you're going to have to wash something but I don't have any problem doing that. If I'm in a hotel room, I just wash it in the sink in the hottest water I can. I roll it up in a towel as tight as I can. I jump on it on the, uh, on the floor of the hotel there and uh, then unroll it and lay it out. And by the morning, it's, it's perfectly dry. So I really could get away with even fewer clothes, but I try to have uh, you know something that you know, I can always go a few days without doing laundry if I have to. And I'm not averse to wearing the same pair of clothes uh, for several days if I have to. And uh, that's just part of this job, especially if I'm somewhere like Syria. Who cares how you smell? You want to look uh, like uh, consistent because the stories that I'm filming very often span several days. And if I'm changing my wardrobe, uh, it looks weird. You know, it doesn't cut together well. So it's important for me to maintain that consistency and maintain a wardrobe that's at least similar. And I'm not going for, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to win any fashion shows here. I'm just trying not to be naked. So that's that. Okay. Now let's uh, look here at, uh, this is a kind of my survival pack. I always carry a little survival pack because it happens. You get stuck in an airport for, you know, overnight or a couple of days or who knows what you get stuck without, um, you know, a, a whole lot of other equipment or anything like that. And this just has some basic necessities like aspirin, uh, um, ibuprofen. It's got some sleeping pills in there, ear, ear plugs. Uh, it's got a, a flashlight and uh, some extra toilet paper and just little things like that. And it, it also has a compass in here. I always carry a compass. If you don't know how to use a compass, you should, and you should always have one on your person, I think, uh, because you never know when you might need that. Now, uh, so that's just a simple kind of uh, sundries bag that I carry. Um, This is a satellite phone. I don't always carry a satellite phone if I'm traveling to Europe or somewhere like that. You're not going to need it, but on this next trip coming up, I will need this uh, satellite phone uh, in Syria, most likely. So I have this satellite phone. We just keep it charged up with minutes. Uh, we buy an annual package of minutes on there. This is something that has come in very handy over the last several years. It's, a, a, it's called a, a Skyroam Solus device, and it basically functions as a Wi-Fi hotspot almost anywhere in the world. It has a couple of big batteries inside it, and those batteries uh, 
not only power the Wi-Fi hotspot, but you can plug your phone into it and charge your phone or your tablet or whatever off of here if you need to. These things actually work pretty well, and uh, I have yet to find too many places where they don't work, and so they have been very helpful when I have to uh, do Skype broadcasts or something like that uh, around the world, and that goes together with uh, this broadcast unit that I'll show you here in a minute. Obviously, you got to have your passport. This is not the wallet that I carry all the time. This is an extra wallet, and I just want to show you what's in here. There's uh, my concealed carry permit, my scuba diving license. Um, it's got a an old credit card that's no good. It's got uh, a couple other little cards that uh, look important. But you know, if you're in a really bad neighborhood, uh, or if you're in a really bad you know country where you might get robbed, it's not a bad idea to carry a, a wallet in a normal place where your wallet would go that you can afford to lose and then carry the stuff you can't afford to lose in an interior pocket or someplace where bad guys aren't going to think to look. If they come up and, and try to mug you and you say, hey, man, here's my wallet. Take it, take it. Uh, I keep a few dollars in here, you know, and, and not much, but I can afford to lose everything in this wallet. And so it's just a decoy wallet that I carry. And I suggest that if you're going to go someplace you think might be dangerous. Now, this is just uh, cables and cords that go along with uh, the rest of my, my gear. This is a GoPro uh, with a stabilizer. This is a, a GoPro um, gimbal device here. Now, I'm hoping to be able to replace this device in the next couple of weeks with what they call the Osmo Pocket, which is basically a miniature version of this that will substantially reduce the bulk and even the weight in my bag. Uh, but uh, this thing has been great. I've used it all over the world. If you're running and gunning, which is what I do quite a bit, um, you know, jumping on and off helicopters, in and out of vehicles, running around, um, this stabilized footage really makes a difference in the quality of the production that you're able to put out. And I do carry a connector to, to connect to the GoPro that will allow me to use the GoPro with my broadcast unit if my regular camera is out of juice or if it goes down or if it breaks. I try to always have a backup because, as they used to say in the military, two is one and one is none. Uh, so, it, it, you know, I've been in that situation before where your camera goes down and you're just out of luck if you don't have a backup. So I always try to have at least two of everything, including the cables and cords that I use in my broadcasting. Okay, uh, on that note, this is a little backup video light that I, I carry. Very small, it's rechargeable, and it's actually pretty bright. Uh, it has lots of, several different brightness settings on it. Um, but these things are, are great, and they actually uh, work very well. You just have to recharge them at night. It's one more thing to recharge. I'll get to the recharging uh, kind of protocol in a minute, but this is actually my backup video light. My regular video light is this one here, and it's also uh, pretty powerful, has lots of different settings. It also do different colors uh, just to, to balance things out. And what I like about this is that it also functions as a uh, backup cell phone charger or you know device charger if necessary. Like I said, I like everything, I, if possible, to serve two purposes and have duplicates of everything. Okay, this is my DJI Mavic Pro drone. Uh, and you can see here, this is a fold-up little, little drone. I absolutely love this thing and I use it all the time. This thing has an incredible range. It'll go up to six miles away from the controller and uh, allow me to get close to the action if it's, uh, you know, warfare or something like that uh, without exposing myself too much. And that's uh, been, that's come in very handy in uh, several of our shoots over the last year or two. Um, this is the controller for that, uh, DJI Pro uh, 2. It's also 4K at 60, very high quality footage and um, really adds a another level of production value to the kinds of news that I'm trying to report. So this is my, my main camera. I actually have, have two different cameras that I use as a main camera. This is a, a Canon 5D Mark III. 
It's a beast. It's a tank. You can drop it down a flight of stairs six times and the camera itself will be fine, although the lens will probably be in bad shape if you try that. Um, I ha as you can see, this thing is pretty banged up. I've had this thing all over the planet. I tried to trade it in one time a while back and they, they took one look at it and said, no, we don't want that. It still works just fine. But the only thing about this one is that it doesn't film in 4K. Uh, now, the new Canon 5D Mark IV does film in 4K, but it, it's a, what they call a crop sensor, and I didn't like that at all. So we went to a mirrorless camera, a Sony a7S II, which I, I like a lot for how it looks, but it's, um, and it's lighter than this one. But uh, it, it tends to not be as durable as this camera is. So just depending on where I'm going and what I'm doing, I'll either carry this one or carry the Sony a7S. Now, I do carry a stick mic. I didn't used to, but when you're doing live reporting on the air, uh, a stick mic like this comes in very handy. This is a uh, Sennheiser MD46. Uh, and the great thing about this is that it is very good at isolating noisy environments. So if I'm in a busy street in New York City and I hold the camera, uh, hold the microphone right here, I'm going to be, uh, you're going to be able to hear me very well and it's going to cut out a lot of the road noise. And so it's very good for that and there's not a lot of other options there. It's also good if I'm doing a, an interview with somebody live on the, on the air and I can pass the mic back and forth. So I do carry that, although I wish I didn't have to. I wish I could just carry, uh, you know, uh, some kind of wireless mic for that. Now, this is the smallest tripod I can find that has a semi-decent fluid head here. Uh, it's a, a me photo is the the brand of uh, or the yeah the brand i guess of this uh i've got several of these it's the smallest one i can find that will stand up high enough for me to do stand up interviews with either myself or with with somebody else uh so it'll go a good probably almost 6 feet high and there is a carbon fiber version of this, but it's like $400. It's pretty expensive. This is the non-carbon carbon fiber version. It's about $200. And like I say, I've got several of them. They work great. I've used them for years. Uh, these are more cords and cables, backups and spares. Uh, I also have a, a charger in there that has one plug. And that one plug will... Uh, except about five different USB cables. So I don't have to look for five different plugs to plug things in. <clears throat> I keep that in here. I pull it out. The first thing I, when I get to a hotel, plug it into the wall and plug all of my charging devices into that one device, uh, if possible, or at least as many as I can. And it just makes things quicker and more efficient. <clears throat> On that note, I have gone to carrying these as a backup storage option for my computer this is a solid state 500 gig hard drive, external hard drive, where I store my video at the end of each day. I always download everything and keep it on the card, uh, which then the, the cards go in this uh, little caddy so I don't lose them. These little micro SD cards are ridiculously small and um, easy to lose. So I always keep the original footage on the cards, but then I copy it over at the end of each day to this solid state hard drive. Now, I used to carry this external hard drive, but the difference in size and weight between these two is pretty remarkable. And like I say, I'm always looking for a way to save an ounce or two. And um, these ones, if you drop them or handle them real roughly, will break, and the solid state one is less likely to do so. So uh, I, I really enjoy these. I get them at Best Buy for about 99 bucks a piece. If you can find them... I highly recommend them. These are great. I also highly recommend the uh, AirPods by Apple. I go with my iPhone. They go with my computer. Uh, I carry two sets of these because, again, I want to have a backup. But also, if you're on a long plane flight, the batteries on these are going to run out. And so I'll actually switch them out and, and have enough to finish my work or whatever I'm doing on an overseas plane flight. I also have started carrying two of these Sony digital audio recorders. And I actually use these in lieu of a microphone or a wireless microphone many times because these things tend to, they, they, they record great sound. 
They have a, a microphone that comes with them. I'm wearing one right now. Uh, and the, the audio levels are great. They do a great job at, at uh, getting good sound. But they will record for like 48 hours straight. So I can put it on somebody that I, if I'm accompanying a Border Patrol agent, for example, I can put it on him and I can uh, just set it to record and just let it go. And what I find is at first, especially when you got law enforcement or military or somebody, they're very wooden and they're very rigid and they're like, oh, there were four personnel over here. And it, but if you kind of let them forget that they're on camera, uh, then eventually, or if you get them in a car and get them driving, get them doing something else, then they're going to really open up and they're going to actually start to give you the kinds of interviews that you want and give the kind of information you want without being so worried about how everybody else is going to perceive it or anything like that. So these things actually are fantastic. I carry two of them and I would totally get rid of this microphone here, which is about $800. And these other ones are about 90 bucks, but uh, this Sennheiser uh, wireless microphone pair, I do still carry it. I have not used it honestly in months because I end up using those digital audio recorders all the time. The difference with these is that you can monitor that audio out of the camera. So if you're doing an interview with somebody, the worst thing that could happen would be for the batteries to die somewhere and you not know it. And so it's important to monitor your audio if you can. Uh, and this allows me to do that. So I do carry those. I just don't use them very much. I also, believe it or not, carry a selfie stick, but that's because I travel alone very often. And if I'm doing a stand up. I hate to do the static stand up like here we are and we are reporting on this subject. You know, I, I like to do moving stand ups. I like to be doing something while I'm talking to my viewers. And this allows me to do that. Uh, it might look cheesy, but it works pretty well. I can put a GoPro on here, but I also have a, an adapter to put my iPhone on there. And in reality, I think I could do my entire job with nothing but this and an iPhone and, and one of those digital audio recorders. I could probably do 99% of my work with just those three items if I really had to. And I, I have at times. I carry a, a couple of these battery backup device, devices. Again, uh, some of them function as a light or something else also. But uh, in, in my line of work, boy, running out of power is the worst possible thing that could happen. So you don't want that to, to happen. If I'm going somewhere where I'm not going to be able to recharge at the end of each day, sometimes I will take one of these BioNO power uh, lithium, this, this holds as much juice as a car battery, but it's extremely light and it's just the right size for taking on an airplane, any larger battery, and it would be illegal to carry on an air, air airplane. The great thing about these bio -Eno power, uh, backup packs is that they connect to foldable solar panels. And so I can recharge here. So like when I was reporting on the, uh, hurricane in, uh, Puerto Rico uh, a year and a half ago, uh, we had to have these because there was no power. And so we, we brought several of these along. We're able to recharge our devices at night and recharge these things during the day while we were out working. And they work, they work really well. Now, this is a first aid kit and I always, always, always carry a first aid kit. I don't always carry this big of a first aid kit, but I always have some first aid. One of the things I never go anywhere without is a tourniquet. Because look, when you're bleeding out, this is the kind of thing that literally can save your life. It can mean the difference between life and death. And just not having this simple little piece of fabric to be able to, to create a tourniquet um, and dying because of it would really be unfortunate. So I usually carry that and some other bleeding control things. Uh, and, and just a, kind of a simple first aid kit. This is a little more... Uh, of a of a trauma kit than I would normally carry, but if I'm going to Syria or someplace, I'm going to have at least this much, if not more. And um, so that's about it, except for my iPhone, which really I couldn't live without a, a, a phone camera. I do so much with this thing; it probably ends up accounting for a good, probably forty or fifty percent of all of the content that I produce nowadays. You know, the great thing about an iPhone is that people are used to seeing people filming with them. If I show up with a big honk and lens and a big camera, very often I will get stopped and won't be allowed into certain places. But if I walk in there and decide to take a picture with my phone, nobody really thinks that I'm a professional videographer, but this thing does definitely film at a professional quality. And so, uh, I actually 
if I want to be unobtrusive or if I want to be non-threatening, I will use this instead of using my big camera uh, more and more often because the, the, the quality is just great. And that's it, except for my bag. And this is the, the backpack that I often carry because it easily holds everything I need. Um, obviously, you know, there are going to be some items that are, um, you know, different based on where I'm going or what I'm doing. If I'm going to Syria, I'm going to have to bring body armor and a helmet, and that's probably going to take a whole nother bag by itself, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things you can't get around. But normally, this is about what I travel with. It all fits in that bag, and it makes it easy to just grab it and go and be, you know, fast and efficient in my travel. And so, there you have it. To answer that question, for those of you who are wondering... There's what I carry. Thanks for watching. I'm Chuck Holton, and this is The Hot Zone. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2019.